guys, how are you doing today? I hope that you're doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. So, today's video is all about me baking from Meet Your Baker. We are doing the first video of Tasting Through Tort, where I'm going to do a deep dive discussion of the book while making a recipe from the um, series that Tort makes, that Jules makes. What recipe am I doing, you ask? I am going to be doing the Raspberry Danish one. Um, I've already mixed out some pre-ingredients um, and hopefully you guys enjoy this I'm wearing my uh, tort ah, apron you'll see more of it uh, and I'm just really really excited to talk about the book with you um, I'll show you some of the steps it's not gonna be like a cooking tutorial video because I'm not a baker and it might not be perfect but this this should be fun I have no idea how long it's going to be uh, but yeah here's my kitchen this is my pantry with a child proof lock that is broken, you know. Um, and I have my iPad because Nick is down for a nap. So you will see uh, sort of what I'm doing here. So what is Meet Your Baker? Meet Your Baker is the first book in the Bake Shop Mystery Series by Ellie Alexander. Um, it says, Welcome to Tort, a friendly small town family bake shop where the treats are so good that sometimes it's criminal. After graduating from culinary school, Juliet Capshaw returns to her quaint hometown of Ashland, Oregon to heal a broken heart and to help her mom at the family bakery. The Oregon Shakespeare Festival is bringing in lots of tourists looking for some crumpets to go with their heroic couplets. But when one of Tort's customers turns up dead, there is much ado about murder. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. The very first time that I read it was in 2017. This is my third time reading this book. We just had the uh, live show last night because we also read this book for the Cozy Escape um, book club. So if you don't know, I run a Cozy Mystery book club um, and you can go and see the live and see what a whole bunch of other people thought as well. Um, but I love this series uh there are she's on book 18 right now of the series and it's absolutely amazing um while i am talking the oven is heating up to 425 so you need a uh, pack two packets of yeast half a cup of warm water now i get to skip this step because i got rapid rise yeast i hope that that doesn't make too much of a difference when it comes to the recipe, we shall see. So let me show you sort of what I am doing. All right, so one of the very first instructions is to take your four cups of flour and um, mix it in with your sugar. So that's what I'm doing. And then the next part of the recipe calls for you to um, melt your butter in your milk. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Don't mind uh, if my kitchen is dirty. I cook almost every single night and trying to clean um, it can be difficult. So I'm just going to turn it on medium and I'm going to pour in my one cup of milk and I'm going to let it um, get warm before I put in my four tablespoons of um, butter. So I do recommend that if you are going to um, make this at home that you uh, get everything ready beforehand, unlike me. Um, I was trying to get everything done and then my milk got really, really hot. So uh, make sure that you are paying attention to everything. One of the things that I noticed uh, is that in the move, my round bunt cake, or my round sort of uh, tins are squished and they no longer uh, hold together. So I'm going to be using my nine by nine um, on here instead. Hopefully that's okay. Um, I might just fiddle with it a little bit. Um, but let's dive into sort of the uh, synopsis of the book and what we thought. So 
Nancy is the one that is killed. Nancy is a board of uh, directors member for the um, OSF, the um, Oregon Shakespeare Festival, and she seems to be wanting to put her fingers into everybody's pie. She is trying to um, get Caroline fired. Caroline is a long-standing um, actor of the OSF and um, I think she I think what they said was that she had been a part of it for like 20 years or so maybe more um, and when we meet uh, Caroline and Lance are um, the director the creative director of OSF um, they come into tort and Jules meets them for the first time just like we do and uh, she's a little put off by Lance at first, which cracks me up. Lance is one of my absolute favorite characters um, throughout the whole entire series. I love him. And um, so he's there and he's just being his awesomely flamboyant, cocky, very self-confident self. And he's there with Caroline to get coffee and to get um, some really great, uh, you know baked goods and Nancy shows up and she seems to be wanting to try and um, get Jules on her side in a way it's very weird and uh, she basically starts commenting on the weight of Caroline and how uh, she needs to lose her weight and just very hateful kind of things that I just don't get. Um, and so you can see immediately that there's tension between the two groups and that uh, something off is, is happening at OSF. Well, my uh, milk and butter concoction are melded together and it's time to pour it in with the flour and with the uh, sugar and yeast and then we're going to let it rise for about 15 minutes and in that case i'm going to probably take you into the living room to chat a little bit more okay i figured out what my issue was i needed to have a little bit more liquid in there so I put half a cup of water in there which is what the yeast was supposed to go into but since I bought instant yeast it did not require soaking so yeah um, I would recommend getting regular yeast since that's what Ellie uses and that's what Jules uses so this could be a mistake but we shall see Okay, so while um, my dough is rising, pretty sure I mucked it up. I went and looked at Ellie's video. Her dough looks vastly different from my dough. I went, like I showed you, and added some more liquid, melted it around. There is a good chance that I ruined the dough and that uh, it will probably turn out gummy. But am I going to redo this and refilm this? No. You wanna know why? Because this is a learning process. And I feel as though I need to be honest with you guys and not make it feel as though I uh, faked it or flubbed it or, I mean, I did flub it, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm just, I'm just gonna be 100% real with you. Hello, Cleo. How are you? There's Ellie's video. Okay, hers is gonna look and be so much better. So go follow her tutorial, okay? She's probably gonna do great. I'm here just to talk about the book, okay? So we have, where did we stop? We stopped with meeting Lance and Caroline and Nancy. And we meet a whole entire cast of people. We meet Andy, the barista. We meet um, Stephanie, the very, very emo, um, uh, just very uh, drawn in. She's the waitress, but then starts baking towards the end. There's Helen, who's Jules's mom. We've got Sterling, the very uh, mysterious uh, kid that comes in that's not from town. The professor, um, who is the um, basically the lead detective. Andy, who 
um, I already talked about Andy, uh, Thomas, Tommy, Tom, uh, who is a high school flame of jewels. Maybe there's some sparks there. Maybe there isn't. From way back when, um, we find that Jules is basically coming home to heal a broken heart. We find out that Carlos has been keeping a pretty big secret from her uh, throughout their few years of marriage. Um, and the, sec the secret that we find out at the end is that he has a nine-year-old boy with his first wife, um, and Jules finds letters from uh, Ramiro in Carlos's uh, sock drawer. And I can totally see why she would be so hurt and um, so just unbelievably just emotionally distraught when she finds that her husband has a, um, has a son from a previous marriage that he never told her about. Now, I didn't remember, but now I, now it's in my mind. Carlos is 10 years older than Jules and Jules is in like her mid twenties. Um, I think that they don't really like say exactly her age, but I'm thinking that it's mid twenties. And so that 10 years is a huge difference. Heck, like the almost four years in between my husband and I are, it is a big difference. Um, and so uh, he lived a lot of life before he met her. Um, so she's trying to heal a broken heart, also trying to repair the relationship between her and her mom after having been gone for so long. Even though they had their Sunday chats on the phone, um, Jules finds out once she gets home that Tort's in trouble. Uh, the recession hit uh, Tort really, really hard and Helen has a heart of gold and gave a lot of money away to um, town folks who were struggling more than her. Uh, her savings that she had been working on really, really hard. Um, she was giving away free food and um, coffee and things um, to help keep the town afloat. Um, but she ended up taking a loan from the devil himself, Richard Lord. Um, and he seems to be dating Nancy in this book. Um, and he's creepily trying to get um, Jules and Helen to sell the shop and then Jules finds out about the loan and that if it's not paid back in full that Helen has to give up ownership of Tort. Like she signed a contract. Um, at the time she didn't think anything of it. So we've got a lot of layering going on which I love in a mystery itself. I love the fact that you can have so much depth and that's one thing that Ellie does really really well is add depth to her characters um one reason why I am doing a reread and that I have I'm caught up on the whole entire series um is because of how well she writes her characters so um let's get back into the plot Jules um is on her way um in she can't sleep so she's going to go and bake at the shop a little bit early and she runs into a young teenage girl named Mia who um, has jam all over her hands and is coming from Tort. Uh, Jules had just made a whole bunch of jam the previous day and so she was like, what are you doing? Why are you here so early in the morning? And Mia's excuse was, oh, um, I, I, I'm just, you know, out thinking. Uh, I, my boyfriend Andy gave me uh, the keys to Tort so that I could, you know, go and think and uh, work on work and things like that. And which of course uh, flabbergasts Jules. And when she gets into Torch, she finds that Nancy has been um, brutally murdered in the kitchen. Jar, uh, like jam jars broken everywhere. And so Jules has to call the authorities and get people in, they have to close for the day. And she starts, since she's been gone so long, she starts second guessing every single person and their motives. Did Andy do it? Um, because Nancy was extremely rude to him about her drink. Did Lance do it? Because he mentioned many times during that first meeting um, how much he'd like to kill her. Did Caroline do it? Because of how cruel Nancy was. What about Mia? Um, when Jules finds out that Mia is writing Nancy's autobiography, you find out that Mia is Richard Lord's daughter and that he has been being uh, blackmailed about it. Like there are so many intricacies 
throughout the whole entire book that it's so hard to like talk about it all um in in one go right like i i think we spent almost an hour last night um at book club talking about it and this video is not going to be anywhere near an hour um but uh, let's see we really start feeling like lance is the one that is the killer he gives really big creep vibes um especially when uh he tries to lure uh jules up to his office after um we find that uh caroline um gets really injured almost like mortally injured um when a sandbag hits her backstage um and so we're really thinking it has to be lance it has to be let's go check on um our dough and uh we'll continue talking all right moment of truth let's see it looks better than it did um i'm not sure if it's actually going to taste good it's got a little bit of bounce back but i'm not sure if that means anything uh but if the great british baking show hasn't taught me anything we do want dough to bounce back after a rise right right i think so okay so it says that um once we have let it rise for 15 minutes we're going to grease two eight inch round cake pans divide the dough into two balls and put the cake cake pad with the it into the cake pans prick with a fork and cover with a t kitchen towel and let rise for another 15 minutes so i am going to do that right now um of course i don't actually have the round cake pans i have um one cake pan and i don't think i'm going to do both i think that i'm just going to do one of them because there's no need to bake two terrible terrible danishes you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to risk it and more dishes. Let's see if it's actually any good. So I'm going to use um, the Pam baking with a uh, flour. Um, I have really, really enjoyed using this for baking. And let's see how that works. Okay, now it is uh, put into the pan and I've poked holes in it. Again, if you are a baker, like, please don't judge me or tell me what I'm doing wrong. You can tell me what I'm doing wrong. That, I, I meant you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, this is going to be covered for another 15 minutes. I'm going to clean up the dishes a little and then we'll move back into my office to continue our chat while this rises again for another 15 minutes. All right, so while the uh, dough is um, proofing again, uh, hopefully it turns out good. You know, it's okay if it doesn't. It's okay, it's okay, doubt, 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 but it's okay. Um, so we find that um, we're, she's really, really good. Ellie is really, really good at making you not figure out the whodunit, which I really, really appreciate. I, uh, last night we were talking and Jess said that she tries, she doesn't try and figure it out. She instead uh, hopes really, really hard that a person isn't the killer which I can super appreciate and I love. So um, if you guys know, Lance is my favorite character. So obviously he is not the killer or he wouldn't be my favorite character 18 books in, right? Uh, and so we narrow it down and narrow it down and it turns out that Caroline is the killer. And one of the things that is brilliant about the way that this was written is Caroline is extremely hurt. Like I said, um, backstage, she gets hit with a sandbag, but it turns out that that sandbag wasn't meant for her. It was meant for Lance. She was trying to get him out, um, potentially even killed. And um, it turns out that she was absolutely psycho. Like even Jules never suspected her. So if Jules never suspected her, why would we? you know, expect her since it's told from Jules's point of view. Um, 
And so Caroline seems to be obsessed with her position in OSF and she even attacked Jules at one point in the book uh, knocking her out because she thought that Lance was trying to replace her with Jules which Jules would never go back to theater ever um and so Caroline ended up being the killer and I just thought that that was so well done and so well played and I read this book not I read the series not just for the mystery but I read it for the character development and I see so much potential in the books of Jules and Helen's relationship as mother and daughter um I truly envy their relationship and I I, I love it it's not toxic um it is just building each other up um Jules decides that uh, the $25,000 that her mom owes Richard, she has been saving in her savings account um, to build and open a restaurant with Carlos. She decides to take that money and pay Richard off. And now she is a full partner in the family bakery, which makes my heart so happy. We're trying to figure out what the relationship between her and Thomas is. Um, which is kind of weird since she is still married to Carlos. What's that relationship like? She ha she she has so much of Carlos in her mind always in her cooking, in the music she listens to, in all of those things. So um what what can we expect from that? Um I I love that um it ends with like Lance um and her sort of becoming better friends um and I, I I love this last uh this last paragraph it says right now I needed tort and my sweet little hometown as for Carlos and the life that might have been for the moment his card and everything it symbolized was tucked in my sock drawer maybe I'd pull it out soon or maybe not. The symbolism of her, he sends her a card um, and she doesn't open it. And the symbolism of her putting it in his sock drawer or in her sock drawer when she pulled those letters from his sock drawer, it's, it's really, really powerful. And um, I, can, I can really, really appreciate that um, quite a bit. So uh, let's, go see how the rise happened okay so the uh the dough has sat for 15 minutes i also made the icing and i only did half a batch since i'm only doing half a batch up here so it was half a stick of butter one cup of powdered sugar um a quarter um cup of milk and then it had like a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla sugar or a vanilla extract ours is from mexico and it is brown so the icing turned out this beautiful shade of sort of like a, a taupey kind of color so it's not like really really white um which most royal kind of icings are so if you're wondering why the color is darker it's because that's the kind of vanilla i used so now it's time to sort of take this and spread it over the top of the dough. All right guys, so I have it covered. I'm going to set it in the oven for 12 minutes and then um, pour all of the icing over it and let it cool. It smells really, really good. I'm sitting here on the couch drinking some water. Uh, if you guys don't know, I do have a bread bubble shop. Here's Cleo. And then a friend of mine made this one um, for me for Christmas one year. And uh, I did have one follower ask me if I could make the um, 
logo at the beginning of my books uh, or in the beginning of my videos um a like coffee mug uh print would you guys be interested in that and the rest are just sort of like fun little things um nick is a trooper right now and he is still asleep uh it's been two hours i don't think he's going to sleep much longer so my tasting of this might have a uh three month old little uh co-host but um yeah i just i love the bake shop mystery series the mysteries are amazing but it's more along the lines of the like i said the relationships and the love between everyone in this series as it even as it continues they get better and better and better so let me know did you like this bake along i'm gonna be better for book number two which is a batter of life and death which we um i will uh put a poll on the fable app and on my patreon on um what recipe you want me to make from there um i don't even know what the recipes are yet because i haven't started it uh but yeah i hope that this was a fun video i hope it wasn't like too crazy but um the uh, Danish should be finished soon, so fingers crossed that it's tasty. All right, so I'm going to let it cool for a little bit, but I will tell you that it smells really, really good, and I am, I tasted a lot of the icing. So that's some good stuff right there. But yeah, let's let it cool for a little while and then see how it tastes. Okay, so it's cooled down. I cut up a little slice. I don't really have like pretty plates or whatever. So I've got like these little um, ramekins right here. I have made myself a very nice, um, a cup of coffee to go with my raspberry danish let's see is it any good did i muck it up i don't know it smells really good but we we shall see uh it seems dense not gonna not gonna sugarcoat it but it does seem a little dense but Okay, so one, raspberry jam, amazing. The um, icing, also really good. The dough is a little dense, but I think it was really good that I added in the liquid um, because I can see the potential of this being super, super nice. But like, it didn't ruin it for me. I'm still gonna eat it but I can tell it's sort of like it's not as like fluffy as you want it to be um I did see one mistake in the recipe and that was it didn't tell me when to add the salt it said that there was supposed to be one tablespoon of salt but it didn't tell me like or one teaspoon of salt but it didn't tell me um when to add the salt from all of the baking episodes I've ever seen you add the salt in when you do all of the dry ingredients. So that's what I did, but it didn't say in the recipe. It's good. I'm I'm going to finish all of that. But let me know. What did you think of Meet Your Baker? Um, did you read the first one? Are you going to continue on with the second one, which is a batter of life and death? It says... Um, welcome to Tort, a small town family bake shop where the coffee is hot, the muffins are fresh, and the cakes are definitely to die for. It's autumn in this book. Um, we do have recipes, of course, at the end. So we're going to read this um, over on uh, Fable if you want to be a part of the community and talk about the chapters and everything. But that's the end of this chapter of Tasting with Tort. 
Um, I hope it wasn't as much of a hot mess as I probably am going to think it is as I am editing, because I will. But I think that it was a successful first episode. Until next time, guys, I will see you later. Bye. Mmm.